Well, good Thursday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. This is the calm before the storm. I don't know about you guys, but I, I know that I have now hit rock bottom. I, I know it does not get much lower than this. Oh, my God. But I'm going to say maybe, just maybe, this is good. I just got finished talking to uh, uh, Joseph Heatherly. And keep him in your thoughts and prayers and thanks um, with his uh, partner, Maya. She's kind of going through a rough time right now. Um, it seems like Cowboy Nation and Cowboy fans are finally waking up to the realization that we have a team that screwed up. Now, now this is the thing. Tonight, the Cowboys get a good win from the Giants. All this stuff gets swept under the rugs, and it's all kumbaya. We're ready to go ahead and turn it around and, and roll right into the playoffs. That, that's what's going to happen. If we lose, it really is rock bottom. But I feel like I've already hit rock bottom when me and Dan Orlowski – start to agree you know there's a whole fire jerry jones situation that's going on right now on twitter and um uh, my man jay tuck i got your tracy's working on your shirt right now it's going to be out tomorrow and it's the fire jerry jones and right now i think jerry jones is feeling a little bit of pressure right now you know he admitted you know well yeah you know i understand the fans are upset and they should blame me yeah we do blame you jerry at some point, you got to say, maybe I'm not good enough to do this. You expect excellence from everybody except for you and your son. And we keep falling in line and believing in Jerry L. Jones and the Cowboys and we're going to do it. And, uh, and no, it ends up, it just doesn't work out. But here's where it's crazy. I want you to listen to this because I can't believe... That Dak Prescott hating Dan Orlowski is throwing Dak Prescott a lifeline. Listen to this. If I'm just sitting here listening to you guys talk, we can see how bad it is. But as you guys start having the week to dissect the film, it feels to me like it gets worse and worse. Yeah, and part of this reason is I don't think there's an offense in football that sets their quarterback up to fail more than the Cowboys do with Dak Prescott. The fundamental ways to get your quarterback to play better or make it easier to play better. You run the football, the Cowboys can't. You use play action, the Cowboys don't. You use motion, the Cowboys don't. You throw screens, the Cowboys don't. They're bottom three or four in a couple of them, bottom 10 essentially in all of them. In many ways, they're saying, Dak Prescott, we want this to be as hard as possible on you. Greeny, it reminds me a little bit, I don't know if you remember, when Brady went down to Tampa mm -hmm. initially, the way that I categorized it was they're so reliant on high-end execution. Mm. It's the same with the Cowboys offense. Mm. And it's so easy for everyone to be like, this guy sucks. No, it, they're, <laughs> they're making it hard to execute consistently. Can, can you believe that that's Dan Orlowski? That it's Dan Orlowski literally saying, Joneses, it's not Dak Prescott. It's not CeeDee Lamb. It's what you're doing, okay? You know, when, when, you have, when you have the formula that's been out, okay, this is usually a copycat league where you learn from other people what they do. When you look at San Francisco, although they came a, a step short, where they've gone through over the last few years where they've added Christian McCaffrey. They added, you know, held on to Ayuk and uh, De Debo Samuels. They got a George Kittle. They got a Trent Williams and things. They, they ended up bringing in a Hargrave. They ended up bringing in a Chase Young and, and a Randy Gregory. They're constantly trying to amass more and more talent to succeed. You look at the Eagles, who are constantly, even right now, even though they got Saquon, which may be the best offseason move if he holds up for the rest of the season, out there, that they're making moves constantly trying to get better and get an advantage over the competition. 
You look at before that, the Rams, you know, they go out. They already had a good team, but they went out and they got Matthew Stafford. They got Odell Beckham. They got um, uh, Von Miller and things. They constantly brought in more and more talent to make sure they could win. Even Tampa Bay, you know, people say, well, it was just Tom Brady. No, it wasn't just Tom, Tom Brady. They were an 8-8 eight eight team with Jameis Winston being 30 for 30, 30 TDs and 30 interceptions. They brought in Gronk. They brought in Tom Brady. They brought in guys like Nama Kinsu and won a Super Bowl. And here you literally have the Joneses saying, oh, well, you know, CeeDee Lamb's getting paid, so we're going to target him more. You, you literally say we're going to target him more. Everybody knows that's where you're going. You're not disguised in Jack. And Squagoo, listen to him. I'm not convinced that Dallas really wants yeah. to win because there is no way you can look at the landscape of the NFL over the, let's just say the last two to three years and think that you've been in position mm -hmm. with your work in free agency to put yourself over the top. I sit home sometimes on the sofa with my feet up and I listen to people say, well, the roster was good enough and the roster did no, this and they got to do this and they just got to, it's not, it hasn't been. And it's something that I've been screaming. Like 12 wins is great, but if we talking about a Super Bowl, I want somebody to go back the last five years and tell me what team has won the Super Bowl only through the draft. Just name one of them. Now there hasn't been one. So I can't, like every time you say that or somebody says that, I'm like, but the blueprint of winning a Super Bowl or making it to one oh. has been to be aggressive in free agency. Mm -hmm. That's literally been the blueprint to get there. I'm not convinced that Dallas really. There you go. And, and uh, you know, this is rock bottom. This is rock bottom when you, you know, when you hear these guys admit, and, and it's not like we don't know this. It's not like it's a surprise that Zeke Elliott is not, you know, an elite running back anymore. It's not a surprise. It's not a surprise that you're, you're going to struggle in the offensive line. And we have, you know, when you think about setting up the quarterback to fail, you don't have a running game, right? You brought in another guy for whatever reason, you won't even try him. Your offensive line last week gave up, uh, let's see, Terrence Steele gave up five. He's leading the NFL and pressure's given up. Zach Martin, all pro, had four. Cooper Beebe had three. Tyler Smith had three. And I think Tyler Guyton had five. So your quarterback has got pressured 20 times. 20 times. Your running game is less than 60 yards, and he's picking up a good chunk of that. You know, we're, we literally have Stephen Jones, you know, feeling good. Well, he, you know, Rico, he, he averaged about four yards a carry. Bro, bro, come on now. And you got CeeDee Lamb, who wasn't there for training camp, who is the only one that's really getting the attention. And we turn around and Jerry Jones is like the player stink. I, I need to put the coach on the hot seat. What is he coaching? We need to put the GM on the hot seat. And if they don't get a win, and, and this is the bad thing. If the Cowboys get a win tonight, all this stuff will be swept under the rug. We'll start feeling good about ourselves. We'll say, oh, you know, that was just preseason for us, man. Now we're getting on a roll. You know, we got that out the way. And we'll forget about this for a while. <sighs> It's like Groundhog Day with the Cowboys. It is Groundhog Day with our Cowboys. I will see you guys in less than three hours for our game. And uh, have a good day. A day I never thought I'd see. Agreeing with Dan Orlowski. Wow. That's bad. Peace.